Hello students. Today we are going to discuss the properties of aldehyde and ketones. And the properties of aldehyde and ketone almost same. If you see the chemical properties of both aldehyde and ketones are similar because they have similar functional group that is carbonyl group. You can say. So, what are the properties? What are the physical properties? What are the chemical properties? Let us discuss. If you if you see, discuss the physical property. Physical nature. If you discuss that uh, formaldehyde is a gas. If you see, formaldehyde is gas. Other. are liquid or solid and the physical state changes liquid to solid depends upon the molar mass greater molar mass the van der waals force will be more that's why physical state changes to liquid to solid so formaldehyde generally is a gas state the second thing these aldehyde and ketones they have a characteristic smell that uh, A pungent odor, pungent odor, and colorless. That is pungent odor and colorless. But if you see the gas, pungent odor and colorless, then. water soluble per solubility compared to alcohol is less if you compare solubility alcohol will be greater than aldehyde ketone solubility of alcohol will be greater due to stronger hydrogen bonding but it is soluble in alcohol due to hydrogen bonding the carbonyl group which has carbonyl group which has partial negative attract the water partially positive that's why it is water soluble so this and the boiling point if you see discuss the boiling point the boiling bp order is that alcohol greater than your Uh, ketone or CO are having same homologous group than aldehyde, then ether. This is the other one. If you compare alcohol, that is acid will come first. First acid, then alcohol, ketone, aldehyde, ether. This is the other boiling point. Then your alkene. This is the important that is comparison of boiling point. Then let us discuss the chemical properties. Chemical nature, chemical properties. We will discuss chemical properties of uh, aldehyde ketone. As you see, both aldehyde and ketone having same group. Carbonyl group. As in mean same group, as it has double bond, it shows addition reaction. And carbon carry partial positive, oxygen carry partial negative. That's why first it is attracted by nucleophile. Attracted by nucleophile. In both case, nucleophile is attracted. Then double bond breaks. That's why it is called nucleophilic addition reaction. is called nucleophilic addition reaction very important aldehyde ketone shows a common reaction organic reaction that is nucleophilization because it carbonyl group is a polar group having partial positive charge on carbon and partial negative charge on oxygen that's why nucleophile attack carbon and the double bond breaks That's why we call nucleophilic addition reaction. The product will be 
this step is a slow step always a slow step formation will be that let it be ideal to become like this so c m u n u then u minus this part this is that uh, one anion is produced this anion this negative ions will take protons it may take proton it is a faster and produce addition product nuclear free addition reaction this is the final product so first step is a slow step addition of nucleophile towards carbon is a slow step so it is a great determining step that's why the order of reaction is dx by dt is equal to k and your aldehyde or ketone concentration that's why it is a fast order reaction or unimolecular reaction so this is about the mechanism of nucleophilic addition reaction and what are the nucleophilic addition reaction shown by aldehyde and ketone we'll discuss this thing so what are the reaction let us discuss first reaction is that you take any aldehyde or ketone let it be r r no problem then if you are with hydrogen cyanide scn here minus here plus so the product will be cn minus will be here h will be here the mechanism will same mechanism first step is slow then second step so the product will be r r c attached to cn like this then single double bond becomes single bond then no h so this is called cyanohydrin this is called cyanohydrin cyanohydrin can be also derived it can be converted to different product if you undergo hydrolysis it will also produce ac it will undergo reduction it is produced from this cyanohydrin you can prepare hydrolysis product different hydrolysis product you can do under hydrolysis product will be r r c coh then oh like this then reduction product if you undergo reduction then product will be r r c then cs2 then ns2 oh so like this so it depends upon the and that that types of reaction whether you are undergoing the sham hydrolysis is hydrolysis undergoing hydrolysis or reduction so this is the side product by side product of the that sham hydrolysis reaction the second very important reaction if you are take aldehyde or ketone let it take aldehyde then when you react with your hydrogen sodium bisulfide Here plus here minus, so the reaction will be R H then C. As side will be here O H direct here then H S O three H S O three N A. So this is your bisulfite. This is your bisulfite product bisulfite. Salt is a salt, and this very important in this reaction where we can this is salt precipitate obtained as a precipitate. So when aldehyde ketone is present in the mixture of organic compound, if you add sodium bisulfite, then the precipitate is produced. Aldehyde and ketone will be separated in the form of precipitate that salt form. That's why it can be separated from the mixture. Very important. How can you separate the Aldehyde ketone from the organic mixture using sodium bisulfide. You remember this one. So this is very important reaction of aldehyde and ketone. That then we can use that other reaction of aldehyde ketone. If we take suppose aldehyde, let it be R C H O. Already you have read in that alcohol chapter. If you take R D S M G X. 
ready first step and second step if you are already you have already alcohol sector you will get second and alcohol the product will be second and alcohol that is second and alcohol if you use that ketone if you use ketone same our gas mgx and second step is this is your first step this is your second step second step is water on the hydrolysis the product will be r r r gas cos that is tertiary alcohol so primary secondary tertiary can be synthesized from uh, aldehyde ketone by reaction with grignard's reagent already we have read in alcohol chapter so this is about that uh, reaction of aldehyde ketone so aldehyde ketone can also react with alcohol if you take aldehyde and alcohol alcohol generally it express dry hcl and alcohol then what happens as alcohol is acts as a nucleophile having lone pair on oxygen it attack then breaks the product will be r h c o r and o h for this is the first product and this is called hemi acetal this is called hemi acetal but when you do again r o h second product then it will be c o r o r if you take andias which so then you can easily o r gas andias which will be o r gas o r gas so this this is called acetal this is product is called acetal aldehyde reacts with alcohol forming acetal first stage hemi acetal hemi acetal means o h group will be free then acetal that if you take ketone set if you take ketone then finally r gas o h product will be then under the hydrolysis r r c o r gas and o r gas this is called keta this is called keta so aldehyde produces acetal and ketone produces keta so this is very important reaction of aldehyde ketone with alcohol okay have you written this one have you written you complete then we will start the remaining reaction complete it okay let me erase this next important reaction is nucleophilic addition and elimination that means same aldehyde ketones first undergo nucleophilization then elimination for example this is mainly done by your ammonia derivative if you take any aldehyde let it be aldehyde when reacts with ammonia derivative g is any group ns3 ammonia derivative of ammonia this is called derivative of ammonia it is generally expressed in presence of acidic medium slightly acidic medium it expresses the reaction expresses in slightly acidic medium then second step will be loss of water then minus water will occur here this water will loss then product will be r h c double bond n g this is your what new addition and elimination product first step what happens this act as a nucleophile attack then addition reaction takes place then followed by elimination loss of water molecule and the result will be what elimination product in the first step so all ammonia and ammonia derivative produce this type of product that is the product will be unsaturated product and this is the product depends upon the nature of 
ammonia and derivative reacts. For example, for here you can do like this. Suppose this is your let it be aldehyde, let it be aldehyde or ketone. This one, this is your main group. If you react with the ammonia in slightly acidic medium, slightly acidic medium, then product will be same. R H C double bond N H This is called imine. The result is imine. Imine is for loss of water. Imine will be for first step. With ammonia, result is imine. With hydroxyl amine, NH2, NH2. Ammonia can be written as NH2H. NH2, NH2H. Here NS2, NS. This is the group. Here G, this is the G. Here this is the G, NS2. Result is R, H, C, double bond. Same, no change. Then N, NS2. This is called hydrazine. This is name is hydrazine. So result is hydrazone. Hydrazone. The product name is hydrazone. If you take hydroxyl amine, NH2OH hydroxyl amine, this is called hydroxyl amine. Result will be oxygen. Here R, R, here H, then C, double bond, N. Water is produced, loss of water, then NADH. This is called oxygen. So, hydroxyl amine produce oxygen, hydrazine produce hydrazone. Then, if you take that NH2, NS2, NH, CO, NS2, this group. This is called NH2, NH, CO, NH2, CO, NH, NH2. This is called semi carbazide. Its name is semi carbazide. Semi carbazide. Semi carbazide. This is called semi carbazide. NH2, CO, NH, NH2. Here, here you see how many nit that nucleophilic center one. Two, three. But which will be better? The, the keto group as keto group is an electron withdrawing group. So first amino group will be the better nucleophile. So product will be R H C double bond. Then it will start from here. N water will loss, then N H, then C O N S. This is called semi carba semi carba zone produce semi carba zone semi carba zone derivative semi carba zone produce only you have to see the loss of water molecule from which nitrogen all are ammonia derivative so then phenyl hydrazine you will get phenyl hydrazine then C six H five N H and next two that is called phenyl hydrazine. So result will be R H C double one. We will start from here M then N H then C six. Here in all cases minus water. All every cases minus water will be double. So this semi here name is phenyl hydrazone. Phenyl Hydrazone, semi carbazone, phenyl semi carbazide produce semi carbazone, phenyl hydrazine produce phenyl hydrazone, hydroxyl amine produce oxygen, 
इसी तरह नेम ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट देन सो फिनाइल हाइड्राजिन सेमी कार्बाजाइड देन हाइड्रोसियामिन देन हाइड्राजिन अमोनिया दीज आर द इंपॉर्टेंट रिएक्शन सो यू कैन ऑल्सो यूज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू कैन यूज दैट दिस रिएजेंट हियर एन एस टू अटैच टू एन ओ टू हियर एन ओ टू इलेक्ट्रॉन उद्रोइंग हाइड्रोग इलेक्ट्रॉन उद्रोइंग इफ यू यूज दिस यू आर दिस इज कॉल्ड टू फोर टू फोर डी एन पी सफॉल दैट इज टू टू क्वेश्चन एंड फोर क्वेश्चन टू फोर डायनाइट्रो फिनाइल हाइड्राजिन फिनाइल हाइड्राजिन मीन्स एन एच एन एस टू इट विल बी सॉरी यू हेव टू राइट लाइक दिस एन एच एंड एन एस टू एन एच एन एस टू ओनली सी सी सिक्स फाइव एन एच एन एस टू इज फिनाइल हाइड्राजिन देन डेरीवेटिव ऑफ फिनाइल हाइड्राजिन इज टू फोर टू क्वेश्चन एंड फोर क्वेश्चन नाइट्रो सो टू फोर डायनाइट्रो फिनाइल हाइड्राजिन इन यूज दिस The result will be you put a carbide head C double bond. Then it will be start from here M, then NH, then benzene ring. Two two position is NO two and four position is NO two. So two for DNP derivative. Two for DNP means dinitrophenyl hydrazine. Two for DNP and its color generally. मे बी येलो ऑरेंज और रेड इट मे बी येलो ऑरेंज और रेड कलर प्रोडक्ट विल फॉर इट मे बी येलो कलर ऑरेंज कलर रेड कलर डेरीवेटिव विल ऑकेन दिस इज द डेरीवेटिव देन यू कैन आइडेंटिफाई दैट एल्डी हेड पीटो प्रेजेंट इन द कंपाउंड सो टू फोर डी एन पी टेस्ट ऑफ एल्डी हेड पीटो फिनाइल हाइड्राइजिंग टेस्ट एंड दिस दिस इज कॉल्ड ब्रैडिस ब्रैडिस रिएजेंट दिस इज कॉल्ड ब्रैडिस रिएजेंट टू फोर डीएनपी टेस्ट ऑफ विच एल्टीटोन इज कॉल्ड ब्रैडिस रिएजेंट दिस इज कॉल्ड ब्रैडिस रिएजेंट फॉर्मेशन ऑफ येलो ऑरेंज और रेड कलर ऑफ डेरिवेटिव सो दीज आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वट न्यूक्लियोफिलिक एडिशन एंड एलिमिनेशन रिएक्शन ऑफ आइडियल एंड कीटोन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑल ऑल दिस ऑल आर इंपॉर्टेंट ऑल आर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यूर कंप्लीट एग्जामिनेशन यू हैव टू प्रैक्टिस विथ सपोज आई हैव टेल यूर आइडियल यू प्रैक्टिस विथ टेकिंग कीटोन सो ऑल रिजल्ट विल बी ऑल रिजल्ट इज फास्ट एडिशन देन एलिमिनेशन यू सी इन ऑल केसेस डबल बॉन्ड इज अवेलेबल हियर ऑल हैविंग डबल बॉन्ड So this is called addition and elimination product of that aldehyde ketone that is nucleophilic addition elimination reaction. Then we will discuss what is the oxidation of aldehyde and ketone. Then oxidation reaction, oxidation reaction. How aldehyde ketone will oxidize? Then what is the product? What is the oxidation reaction? First is if you use strong oxidizing agent like this nitric acid, then nitric acid, then potassium permanganate or potassium dichromate solution. If you use, they oxidize yes, aldehyde and ketone to acid. Here suppose you take aldehyde. If you use this oxidizing agent, then it will oxidize as aldehyde to acid. Probably acid. But if you take ketone, R, CO, R gas, same oxidation product will be first product to anyone. Suppose this is your product. Suppose this is your R. COH plus and this one the acid produced depends upon the number of carbon atom R then other acid if it is 
contain two carbon, so acidic acid. If it contain three carbon, it will be propyl, that is propanoic acid. So this will be produced. So what is the important thing is here? There is one rule that is Popp's rule. The rule name is Popp's rule. That is Popp's rule. P O P Popp's rule. What is the Popp's rule for oxidation of ketone? Mainly, the lower ketone first it will oxidize. Suppose C H three C O C H two C H two C H three. This is your what? Ketone. But here lower ketone is this is the lower ketone. This part is the lower ketone, and this part is the higher ketone. So if it will oxidize, as per the first rule. First acid will be the lower member of acid that is that is the group will be selected containing keto group. So this is the lower number. So acid will be acidic acid. Then remaining one, two, three carbon. So this is propyl acid. CH two, CH two, CH two. This is very important for oxidation of keto by nitric acid or KMnO four. So product will be acid. But the which acid will be produced? If you start from here, it will be butyl one, two, three, four butyl acid. But it is the it is the major part. This is the major part because the lower member is CH3CO. Always you select CH3CO as a lower member. So this is the oxidation of iodine ketone by strong oxidizing agent. Then if you do weak oxidizing agent, weak oxidizing agent. Like your the name you can say tolens reagent. Using tolens reagent. This tolens reagent tolens reagent is the mixture of silver nitrate and ammonium hydroxide. This mixture that is ammonia solution of silver nitrate is called tolens reagent. It will produce a complex. The complex is Ag NH3. Pol two, pol bracket plus, and which minus. This complex is for. So this complex oxidizes that uh, what aldehyde. Suppose you take aldehyde R C H O. If you use Tollens reagent, that A G N S three pol two plus, and which minus. The result will be first member will be C. Then silver mirror will form. Silver mirror, silver mirror form. The remaining will be ammonia. So you can balance it. So very important is what is the identification of the reaction of tolerance reagent with the aldehyde? Result is mirror. Silver mirror, shining mirror. Silver mirror is formed. But if this reaction is just you have to heat, you have to warm the solution. You have to warm the solution. Then the result will be formation of silver mirror that indicates the compound is aldehyde. This is very important test that aldehyde ketone aldehyde can be tested by Tollens reagent. But this reaction not shown by not shown by ketone ketone will not be oxidized by Tollens reagent because. Ketone, this bonds are sigma bond, but in aldehyde, this bond is one sigma bond, but weak CH bond is weak bond, but CC bond is strong bond. This CC bond cannot be oxidized by Tollens reagent. That's why ketone does not give Tollens test. Only aldehyde will be because aldehyde has CH, that is CH weaker weak CH bond. That's why it can easily oxidize. So aldehyde can be easily aldehyde can oxidize aldehyde to corresponding acid, but ketone will not be reduced. We can say here what happens that uh, here ketone will not be oxidized by Tollens. Here aldehyde reduces Tollens reagent to silver mirror. We can you can say in other language that aldehyde reduces Tollens reagent to silver mirror. 
and the or tolerance reagent oxidizes as hydrochloric acid. So, in two language you can use for the reaction of tolerance reagent and IDI, but ketone is not so in this case. Then, what are the other oxidation reaction? Other reaction then that is failing solution. Failing test. Failing test is that is failing A and failing B mixture and failing A that is copper sulfate, copper sulfate, ammonical copper sulfate, ammonical copper sulfate, and your tartaric acid, tartaric acid, tartaric acid, sodium potassium tartarate B. A is your copper sulfate and ammonia acid. So this mixture is a blue color solution equal molar concentration of A and B will be taken. The resulting mix reagent will be blue color. When it will add it and warm with aldehyde and ketone, it gives a red precipitate. If you take aldehyde, if you take aldehyde, we use filling solution. Filling solution also produce that on warming it will produce. You can use also as a copper hydroxide on warming, copper hydroxide that this produce copper hydroxide, the result will be acid with the formation of it will be reduced to copper cuprosulfide, the red color. So, indicate the presence of aldehyde. So, when aldehyde reacts with failing solution, that when detail the failing solution, a red color of cuprous oxide is produced. This is very important test, chemical test of aldehyde and aldehyde and ketone also. Failing solution and tolerance. But ketone, here already I told you, ketone also does not give. This test, this test will not be shown by ketone. But the same ketone having but ketone having strong what sigma bond as strong sigma bond it cannot ox it cannot be oxidized by failing solution because the failing solution tolerance reagent these are very weak oxidizing agent that is not strong oxidizing agent unlike nitric acid KMnO4 and potassium dichromate these are strong oxidizing agent so this is the very important difference between aldehyde and ketone using failing solution but you want you remember another important thing that the benzaldehyde, although it is a aldehyde, benzaldehyde does not give this test. Failing solution test will not be shown by benzaldehyde, although it is aldehyde, because it produces a complex with the what? The solution. That's why the color will not be distinguished. So, this is the very important difference between aromatic aldehyde and aliphatic aldehyde. Aromatic aldehyde does not give failing solution, but aromatic aldehyde gives what? Tolerance test, but failing solution not shown by aromatic aldehyde. So, this is another dish, that oxidation of aldehyde and ketone. Then, third oxidation is using iodoform test. Iodoform test. If you use iodoform test, already we have discussed in alcohol chapter that aldehyde containing any aldehyde. Any aldehyde, any aldehyde containing CH3CO group, CH3CO group or ketone, CH3CO, CH3. This group, if aldehyde or ketone having CH3CO group, then it will be oxidized by first. Sodium hydroxide and IV. It is called NaOI. Already discussed in alcohol chapter. Mixture is NaOI. When you warm it, then it gives a low precipitate of this part will break. Okay? This part will break. Forming what? Iodoform CH I3 CH I3, then remaining parts of it is sodium formate, remaining will be formate. If you take acidic acid, this one, the result will be hydrofoam plus sodium acetate. As acid aldehyde after formation of hydrofoam, remaining one carbon, so sodium formate. Suppose so you take acetone, 
then acetone which will take acetone result will be iodoform and 2 carbon that is sodium acetate so for this the result will be iodoform chi3 yellow color yellow precipitate will form then remaining carbon 2 carbon so acetic acid sodium salt of acid is formed so this is the important uh, that uh, distinction that uh, aldehyde ketone having CH3CO group can show iodoform test that produce yellow precipitate of iodoform CHI3 is produced. This is very important. This is one of this example of oxidation of aldehyde. That here aldehyde is gets oxidized, here ketone gets oxidized by sodium hydroxide and iodine because iodine oxidizes oxidizing it in alkali medium oxidizes aldehyde ketone to iodoform. That's why we can identify the presence of what? Aldehyde having CH3CO2. But which iodoform only shown by organic compound or aldehyde ketone containing CH3CO2? This group it must contain. Without CH3CO2, it cannot give that iodoform test. It cannot show iodoform test. So, this is the important oxidation of aldehyde ketone using tolerance reagent, using strong oxidizing agent, using phenyl solution, you are using alkaline iodine that is iodoform test. So this is about the oxidation of iodine ketone. The next you complete this one, it is a very long chapter. So you have to prepare the notes and, and practice more. All reactions you have to write. Without reading you have to write several times. Those then you can remember the reaction. Organic paper practice. Okay, let me erase it. Next is reduction of iodine ketone. The reduction. Oxidation and reduction. We know already aldehyde or ketone when undergo reduction by lithium, aluminium, hydride or sodium borohydride. Already we have read in alcohol chapter. Sodium borohydride or nickel hydrogen like this. The production will be alcohol. RCH2OH. Corresponding alcohol will be formed. Ketone also gives, aldehyde always gives primary alcohol, always gives primary alcohol, and ketone always gives tertiary alcohol. Second level, sorry, this other gives second. This is the difference between aldehyde and ketone. Aldehyde on the reduction produce primary alcohol and ketone on the reduction produce your secondary alcohol. This is about reduction, one important reduction. But if you use a specific reagent and that is called, we can say that Clemenson reduction. Clemenson reduction if you do name reaction, Clemenson reduction. Clemenson reduction what happens? If you take aldehyde, any aldehyde or ketone using that zinc amalgam and concentrated HCl, the product will be alkyl. Product will be alkyl. Then you may will be water. Very important. This is very important reaction that Clemenson reduction always gives alkane from aldehyde. Clemenson reduction gives alkane. And uh, here also we can do if you, if you take ketone also, if you take any ketone, same zinc, mercury, and HCl product will ketone, the alkane R CH2 R. -R. This is alkane. So you take aldehyde of ketone result with alkane. This is called Clemenson reduction using zinc amalgam and HCl. And also you can reduce aldehyde of ketone using that uh, HI and red phosphorus. If you use HI and red phosphorus, you will get also alkane. This is also very important reaction. Aldehyde ketone when undergo reduction by HI and phosphorus, it will give also 
alkene. So this is about reduction of aldehyde and ketone. Then another reduction is that is an important name reaction that is called Uff Uff Kissner reduction. That is called Uff Kissner reduction. O W L F F Uff Kissner Kissner reduction. This is an important name reaction. This is also important and this is also important. Okay. What is Uff Kissner? In Uff Kissner, what happens? When aldehyde or ketone will be converted to that uh, oxygen, NH2OH, when convert to oxygen, R, CH, double bond, NOH, this is called oxygen. When this oxygen, when it convert to oxygen, then what happens? When it convert to oxygen, then this oxygen will react with your potassium hydroxide and ethylene glycol. Ethylene glycol. It produces alkene. RCS3 plus nitrogen. So very important. This is alkene. So when aldehyde ketone will be reduced, either it gives alcohol or alkene. This is the true product. When aldehyde ketone will be reduced, the result will be either alcohol or alkene. Alkene will be in these three methods. Using Clemenza reduction, using HIN phosphorus or Uff Kissner reduction. In Uff Kissner reduction, the aldehyde will first convert to oxygen, already we have discussed, already discussed earlier. That is NH2H is hydroxyamine, reacts with, with aldehyde, or aldehyde or ketone, both. That is oxygen. Oxygen when reacts with potassium hydroxide on heating. Produce alkene. So this, this is an important reduction of aldehyde ketone. Then next we will discuss very important reaction, main reaction that is aldol condensation and Kanegiris reaction. Then first is then aldol condensation. It is also one important main reaction, aldol condensation. What is the rule? That aldehyde or ketone having alpha hydrogen atom. That means here required having alpha hydrogen atom. Then it will react. If aldehyde ketone having alpha hydrogen atom, then it reacts. It gives aldol condensation. Here what is the reaction? If you take aldehyde, suppose uh, CH3 CHO. Here it has alpha hydrogen, already it has alpha hydrogen atom. When two molecules of aldehyde ketone reacts with sodium hydroxide, when it reacts with sodium hydroxide, it will produce what happens? Condensation means what happens? First, here having alpha hydrogen atom, one molecule will be taken, same out of two molecules, one molecule will be taken. CHO becomes CHOH. We have to remember the technique. One group will be CHOH. Then that H is coming from this one. That's why the remaining group, remaining compound will be CH2CH. So this is the result. That is alpha. This is your beta. So beta hydroxy aldehyde. Beta hydroxy aldehyde is for. But what is the name of this compound? 1, 2, 3, 4. That is 3 hydroxy 1, 2, 3 butanol. This is the IQC name. This is the common name beta hydroxy aldehyde, the class of compound. So if you take ketone also, same if you take ketone, same method, always combine with two molecules. This is dilute medium, not concentrated. And also heating. And same NaOH value. Then there's the same. We will take one group CH3, CH3 here, CH3. Then CO become COH. O become OH. Always O become OH. Then remaining, remaining 
Group C S3, it becomes C S2, C O C S3. So C S3 becomes C S2 and C O C S3. So this is also this is called alpha. This is also beta. If you start numbering that uh, uh, that one, two, three, four, five. So four hydroxy. This name is four hydroxy. Four hydroxy. Then two methyl, four methyl, four hydroxy, four methyl. Then it is five penta. So penta non two, penta non two. The two question is it over a two penta non. So four hydroxy, four methyl, pen, penta non two or two penta non. So this compound is formed here. One thing. You have to remember two molecules is combined. But what is your cross aldol condensation? For example, if you take CS3, CHO plus HCHO. Here we have to see if both having alpha. Here it has alpha in the matter, but it has no no alpha. It has no alpha, no alpha carbon. That is no alpha carbon. So it will not give hydrogen. One losing hydrogen. That is CS2. Here one losing that's a CS2. So here the two will lose. So your product will be if you use dilute NaOH, the product will be you start from here. HCH O becomes OH. So let me tell you O becomes OH. Then it losing hydrogen. So CS2 CH. So this is the product. Okay. So this is this is called cross aldol condensation. Cross aldol condensation. What is cross aldol condensation? When two different molecules will be taken with dilute NOH, then the product will be that product will form that is called cross aldol condensation. So you have to practice. And sometimes what happens? This reaction it also loses water molecule. It also loses water molecule. By loss of on heating, on heating we just OH H product will be alkene CH CH will be known as CH CH like this. Here also same on heating water will be lost. And what is the product? You see CH three, then CH three, then C double bond CH and CO CH. This is the product. Set the proof. The product more branching alkene will form. So all the cases. This is the second step. If you heat the water, the solution you can get also what alkene. So this is about aldol condensation and cross aldol condensation. And mainly this reaction takes place in presence of dilute NOH. That is 50% uh, below 50% NOH solution. That's why it is called aldol condensation. Then the last reaction, very important reaction is. That is Kanizawa's reaction. Here, Kanizawa's reaction. This is important name reaction. In Kanizawa's reaction, here having no alpha, having no alpha hydrogen. Here, having alpha, all aldehyde proteins should have alpha hydrogen atom. Here. Hydrogen atom is not required. For example, formaldehyde. Two molecules of formaldehyde. One reacts with concentrated NaOH. Here dilute, here concentrated. Then the result will be one will be oxidized. What is oxidized product of aldehyde? That is salt. Then another will be reduced. Then methanol. So we will give acid and alcohol. This is the acid. This is your alpha. So one product is acid, one product is what? Alcohol. For the which one? Kanizawa's reaction. So Kanizawa's reaction always produces acid and alcohol as the same compound gets oxidized and reduced. Oxidized. This is oxidized and this is reduced. That's why this reaction is also called as what? This reaction is called as disproportionation reaction in organic chemistry. Disproportionation, disproportionation reaction. 
This reaction is called disproportionation reaction. Disproportionation reaction means the same organic compound gets oxidized and reduced. You remember this is very important. Which organic reaction is called disproportion reaction? Kanzio's reaction because the compound gets oxidized and reduced. Then here, which compound will not give benzaldehyde? Benzaldehyde will give benzaldehyde also give this reaction. Then uh, this compound also give having having no alpha. This compound also give having no alpha as an atom. Having no alpha ion atom can give Kanzio's reaction. Okay? Then this compound CH3CHO will not give Kanzio's reaction because it is having alpha, having alpha ion atom. But we have to select the aldehyde having, having no alpha. This is alpha carbon. This is the alpha carbon. Having no alpha hydrogen atom. The hydrogen atom should not be there in the alpha carbon then it will give Kanzio's reaction. So this is about Kanzio's reaction and aldehyde condensation. Then very important thing I want to tell you that what is the order of reactivity of aldehyde? Reactivity order, reactivity order between aldehyde and ketone if you compare that you see aldehyde and ketone like it is this is your aldehyde and this is your ketone. If you see, this all the aldehyde ketone shows nucleophilic addition, nucleophile attack. In all the cases, nucleophile attack. So this carbon atom, if carbon atom be less electropositive, if carbon atom be less positive charge, then nucleophile cannot be the attack. But here, plus I effect is 1, here plus I effect is 2. As it has 2 plus I effect, so the partial positive charge on the carbon is less in case of ketone. If you see, they are supplying electron towards carbon, that's why the positive charge on the carbon is less. That's why nucleophile attacking towards this carbon will be slow. That will be slow, this will be fast. Why? Because the carbon can more positive charge, this carbon can be less positive charge due to positive charge. This is one point. Another point also you can say that steric factor that as aldehyde has two bulky group, so nucleophile cannot attack to this carbon easily because the carbon attacks to more bulky group. If bulky group is more, then attacking will be slow. So this is the very important concept of reactivity of aldehyde. So aldehyde is more reactive than ketone towards nucleophile at selection. If you compare the reactivity, that formaldehyde will be highest reactivity order, then which will come? Reactivity, then reactivity will be your uh, acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde will be more that reactive that is less reactive compared to formaldehyde. But if you use that aromatic ring. That CHO, if you see, if you compare this, this will be less reactive towards formaldehyde. It is also less reactive than formaldehyde. Because it has a resonance, it supply electron towards carbon. When the supply electron towards the carbon, then the partial positive charge will be less. That's why it is less reactive than formaldehyde also. So then if you compare the ketone, if you compare ketone, this CS3, CO, C6, H5, then C6, H5, CO, C6, H5. If you compare, then it will be which one? It will be more reactive than this one because it's a bulky group. As two bulky group is there, reactivity will be less compared to this one. So, this compared to this one that this is called acetophenone, this is called benzophenone. Acetophenone will be more reactive than benzophenone towards nucleophilic addition reaction. So this is about the some chemical properties of aldehyde and ketone. You practice more, okay, any doubt you have, you can 
interact with me you can talk to me about your doubt so but one thing important is you have to practice you have to write this reaction two three times then you can remember and application part you have to read different competitive books for the application part of this reaction okay thank you all